a DRC approach for the research passage, you read. You don't carefully read, but you at least skim uh, because it has multiple studies. You want to understand the processes described, look at the differences and the different processes. What are they studying between each one? You're probably going to have a question about those differences. We know this is a research passage because we can see study one and study two. I like to read or skim the intro. It just helps me to orient myself to what's going on. And then you're just looking at what each study looks at differently. Our approach to the questions is the R and R approach. So you're going to read the question and then reread the question. So in your first reading, you're just trying to understand what it's asking, kind of orienting yourself, skimming, if you will. And then you reread, you're really breaking it down step by step. So as we go through it, um, I'm going to be doing the reread part. I already read it. Hopefully you've already read it and we're rereading. If you haven't read it before we start, pause the video and read it before we start. Based on the results of study one, so finger on study one, the highest percent of finches on island B had a beak depth. So we're looking for beak depth. So islands B and C, so let's start with island B. Okay, so island B. And we'll the highest percentage, which is the tallest column, and that is a beak depth of 10. So we can eliminate A and B. And then island C, so just put your finger on island C, tallest column there, also a beak depth of 10. So your answer is D. Question number two. During which the following years were small seeds likely most abundant on island B? So we're looking at this chart. And this one's tricky because it says in the reading, during dry years, all seeds are less abundant and the average size is larger. So dry years are less abundant and large. That means wet years are abundant. So it doesn't exactly state what we're looking for. It states the opposite. Dry equals less abundant. So we're looking for the most wet year which is 1984. So Jay, tricky question, not hard, just a little bit time consuming. Study one differed from study two and went to the following way. So we use process of elimination. Choice A and B ask which type of birds were captured. And choices C and D ask about beak depth. Well, we know they measured beak depth in both study one and study two because we answered that in question number one. So now we're just going to see which ones did they capture. In the study one, they captured both the fort and the fools. In the study two, they only captured the forts. So uh, the fools were captured in study one but not study two. So your answer has to be B. It is most likely the researchers tagged the birds they captured during study one to do what? So this is a scientific process question. You may not find the exact reason in the text, but it's a process question you have to reason through. So you can process of eliminate if you want. But let's look at study one. It just tells us they tagged the birds, measured its beak depth and released it. Uh, we know that it's an inheritable trait. We know they're studying how the beak depth affects seeds. So choice F, rainfall, they're not really seeing how beak depth is affected by rainfall, plus it's an inheritable trait. They're definitely not discussing age at all, so G is out. Um, ensure they measure them multiple times or only once. So since those are opposites, it's probably going to be one of those two, H or J. It's a little trick you can know on ACT. And they're really just wanting to know each bird because the beak depth isn't changing. It's an inheritable trait, so only once. J, scientific reasoning question. Based on the results of study two, so we're looking at study two, would a finch with a beak depth of 9.4 or a beak depth of 9.9 .9 have a greater chance of survival in 1977? So we're here, we're looking for the greatest chance of survival. So how do we know? So we gotta look at beak depth. Where does it tell you about beak depth? And it tells you that in the reading, this is a tricky question, shallower beaks can efficiently crush and eat only small seeds. Deeper beaks can crush and eat both large and small. So 9.9 .9 is larger. So shallow beaks equal only small, deeper beaks equal small or large. So still, how do we know which one has a greater chance of survival in 1977? 
we get a hint. It says it's a dry year. What does a dry year mean? During dry years, all seeds are less, less abundant and the average size of available seeds is larger. So dry year equals larger seeds, which means a bird with a deeper beak will be more likely to survive. So C, depth of 9.9, .9, because that's the larger beak, and the available seeds are larger. That's a lot to process. Again, not necessarily hard, but on a timed test, this can be a tricky question. Question six, a researcher hypothesized there would be more variation in beak depth measured for the fortress finches when they were forced to compete with another species. Do the results for study one support this? So we're looking at study one, and you can use the answers to see what you're looking at. You're comparing island A and island B, and island A has two species. So island A is competing, island B is not. So is there greater beak variety in island A? And we see that there is more beak variety in island A. So the answer has to be yes, because the range of depth was for finches was greater on island A than on island B.